Hey everyone, Sean here and welcome to another review. This time around we're going to be talking about today uh, Amazon's Fallout. Uh, this is a TV series, quote unquote, that's been streaming on Amazon just very recently. It just premiered on Amazon Prime uh, on April 10th. A little earlier than expected, right? They even like shifted it uh, a little earlier, which is interesting. But anyways, it is out nonetheless, and I just wanted to sit down and talk about it with spoilers later on, and is just get my general thoughts out of the way for this uh, first part of the review. Um, don't forget to subscribe, all that stuff. A lot of people watching these videos are not subscribed, so if you like to see more. Uh, this type of content along with other stuff that you know I'm interested in stuff like that including video games uh, other anime and such other things including even card detailing um, randomly I know um, you can hit the subscribe button um, you know you're really here to watch me talk about stuff so uh, in this case though again we're gonna be talking about fallout so this is coming from uh, me coming in as a casual uh, Fallout enjoyer. I, um, funny enough, uh, dove into Fallout uh, fully during Fallout 4. Um, I know a lot of people had a lot of things to say about that one, especially the, you know, the hardcore Fallout players. You know, they they're sticking, they're like, you know, sticking to Fallout 3 or New Vegas, all that stuff. I understand that that those are, you know, more ways than one the superior games. Uh, while Fallout 4 tends to be the more accept not accessible so to say but like the the more casual type of thing but I think those type of games do have their place to bring people like me in and really um, discover the lore that's very lush and rich and quite interesting at that too um, that's very important of course and I I was drawn into it definitely um, through my throughout my playthrough of uh, Fallout, you know that addicting open world ish sort of um, just wandering around and finding these audio tapes and books and all this stuff to read and take in all the lore and such like that to really discover the world that Fallout has built for us to see and check out and of course this is based off of that um and it does take elements from earlier fallouts i'm not specifically sure this takes place in la um for this one and then uh, obviously they will you know reference other such things here and there that might that might have flown over my head so to say but um you know but there are things to take away from that i'm sure everyone can enjoy whether you're a Fallout fan or just someone who's looking for some sort of entertainment. Now, yes, this is um, quite violent, though, just to throw that out there. So if you're not really into those type of shows, this is definitely not for you. There is um, a pretty decent amount of graphic scenes. But, of course, you know, that's kind of honestly uh, appropriate within Fallout as someone who has played Fallout. Um through and through and experience that again and again and again especially with the uh, the bat system and all that fun stuff um it definitely is a part of that right it, it kind of plays along with that you know that happy joy joy thing but you know while that you have violence just straight up violence just happening right in front of you you know it's almost like you know um you're doing these dark things with a smile on your face, right? Um, it's definitely dark humor, black comedy um, thrown in there, along with that retro punk um, future type of stuff. You know, especially if you check out the cars, right? And uh, interesting theming around this whole thing. You know, even the the pit boy and the fault of uh, the vault tech stuff, the vaults in general all really add up to this really really interesting world and i think this um show did a good job for the most part or, or at least at the very least decent to convey that sort of a uh, flavor or theming uh for 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 this um iteration of fallout you know that being said do i think it's like the perfect way to get into fallout probably mm, mm, i don't know that, that's kind of hard to say but for what it was overall, I did enjoy my time with this uh, show. 
Um, I watched all ep episodes in one night. Um, kind of tells you something. Despite me being so tired, I tried to enjoy it as soon as, um, as much as I could for each episode. And I think for the most part, it stayed pretty consistent throughout each episode. Each episode is an hour for sure, like a good hour. So you get plenty of time for per episode. And I think the pacing of it and stuff like that was pretty decent. Um, although I think they should have discovered, um, looked into more stuff for sure. But for what it is, it is a pretty decent uh sort of retelling or reimagination based off of Fallout with elements from different, perhaps different Fallouts thrown into this one. And then, you know, even they are going to uh, lead into the next one, you know, sort of minor spoilers. Um, they already ordered a next season. So I think we, we can definitely, um, are, we are safe to say that this is going to continue. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. So that, that definitely tells you how I feel about the show already in a way. And I think this is going to be one of those um, Amazon shows that, were, that is going to be here to stay based off of like nerd culture stuff, like, right? Like, you know, Fallout being a video game and then we have Invincible and then The Boys, you know? So I think this is uh, just up there. Um, I, you know, just right behind, I think, Invincible and The Boys, right? Um, and it's funny, they're all, <laughs> they're all these shows that are just violent, um, through and through. And, uh, um, I think that's pretty interesting, right? It's something, uh, you know, all coming from Amazon, of, of all things. I just never thought that Amazon would be the one to have all these shows that just are pretty consistent for the most part. There are some messes, of course. But I think they, they've been doing a pretty good job with whatever they're handling. And I think Fallout is definitely one of them, in my eyes anyway. But um, if you're like a picky, like really, really into the Fallout lore, the hardcore fans anyway, I think they're definitely going to be picky about, you know, the timing and stuff like that, the, the years, right? Because um, first off, right, the plot or the summary of it is that um, the, the, the sort of um before well before right um everything's all dandy blah 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 right um and then you you have the the nuclear bombs going off um and then it, and it takes place uh 200 years later and then you have all these characters that are um you know in the vaults and such like that um and including of course we have um Lucy Lucy is of course the main focus here uh while we have other um, you know, main characters such as uh, Maximus, and then we have, um, lastly, the ghoul uh, or Cooper, if you want to call him that. Uh, but I think I think most people will call him the ghoul. You know, so um, I th I think really, of course, uh, you know, someone like me, I think I was really drawn into the ghoul overall. I really liked um, Wal Walton uh, Goggins. I think his name is. Um, I like, I love his performance. I know it's like something up his alley. So if you really like that type of stuff, um, definitely, you know, right up there, you know, um, it definitely w will be palatable, I guess, in that sense. If you're really into Goggins' style of acting here, um, pretty similar from other, other such shows or, um, uh, other, you know, uh, movies and projects and such. If you if you if you know uh, Goggins, then you're gonna love him here definitely for sure. And I, but I think he really um, you know works well as well the ghoul, um, funny enough. And um, but he also plays um, I believe he was like a star or actor or something like that. Um, kind of plays and really blends into that retro punk future punk thing really well uh, I, th I thought he really fit into that sort of style very very well it's you know it even has like that film noir almost sort of thing here and there that little that little sprinkle of that here and there and then in, in, of course in the past um it definitely has that sort of noir sort of thing going on retro noir maybe i um that could be a thing but maybe something that's something i may uh i'm making up as i go along here but but yes um, the ghoul is really cool. I, I liked his weapons. I enjoyed his gunplay. 
Um, and, and speaking of which, the action was great um, uh, um, through and through. And uh, we definitely get plenty of that throughout the show. I, uh, and of course, there are, you know, exposition stuff as, of course, a world where there is a lot of lore. So uh, I, I believe there is some like audio taping here and there. But I think for the most part, um, the exposition here is palatable. It's not, it doesn't go on too much. And we definitely, again, we get some really interesting uh, uh, action scenes and such like that. Um, something to really help push along, um, I think, nicely. You know, at least for someone like me, anyway. Uh, but yes, the, the ghoul was great, um, point being. Um, I think out of the three characters that I enjoyed the least, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, maybe, maybe Maximus was kind of not enjoyable or maybe even Lucy, but I don't know. Um, it's hard to say, um, because I think that all these characters are interesting in their own right, um, throughout the show. I thought they had their place. Um, I love like sort of Lucy's initial character and then as she goes along there's a reason why there's context to it um, as to where she winds up and such like that um, you know it, it's like uh, you know it's funny right like the uh, fallout you know it kind of exploits these sort of like cult sort of cultures right throughout um, the world right um, there is a there there are factions and that's a huge part of this world, you know. Uh, we have the the Brotherhood of Steel, uh, you have um, the Raiders, and then you have, uh, of course, people from the Vault, right? The Vault Dwellers, so to say, um, so on and so forth. Um, there are plenty of other groups um, throughout throughout the world of Fallout, right? Depending on where you're coming from, you know, whether you play New Vegas and stuff like that. But there are, you know, consistent groups, including, of course, the Brotherhood, the Vault Dwellers, and the Raiders, right? So on and so forth. And of course, of, of course, we can't not forget the Ghouls, right? Even the Ghouls are, you know, the groups and stuff like that. Now, there are plenty of missing ones in this one. And I, I'm afraid to say, um, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil things a little bit here. Minor spoilers, but there aren't there aren't mutants here, um, at least yet. Anyway, we'll probably we we'll, we have to be getting them in the second season for sure. Um, and and I think I think I think you'll feel rest assured, right? Uh, once you watch watch the show. So I think I I really do believe we will uh, get the the mutants, right? The super mutants and all that stuff, um, and. And of course, the monsters, right? Uh, monsters are another huge thing. Um, I kind of wish we got more of that, but we did get some kind of sprinkled here and there. There are some interesting creature designs, which I believe are all from the from the game. Um, um, don't quote me on that, but there was this like big goop. Uh, what do you call those? Like those um, amphibious creatures i forget their name uh I, I, it's, it's it's definitely based off of that um it's it's the one with the, the weird like frilly gill looking things um they have like throughout it's kind of like a mane um they, they're kind of pinkish and they have these like dot like eyes i forget what they're what they're what they're called um they're not salamanders they're, they're they kind of like look like that they're very, again, they're amphibious, but the one in, in the show here, I love the detailing. The CGI was really good. I forgot to mention that. Um, I think the CGI thrown into the show was looking really good for the most part. Um, I think the roughest parts for some of them were the uh, the actual choreography of things. As much as I did say that, yes, the action was pretty good for the most part. The actual sort of uh, melee attacks and how people get hit and stuff like that. It did look a little rough. Um, the choreography there could have used a little more work. But um, whenever there's like blood or guts or heads being blown off or holes being put into people, that's where it gets really cool. Um, so like the weapons, right? The guns, they kind of do like do a good job sort of like making up for it, so to say. So there, yes, there are plenty of weapons, not just guns, but there are plenty of other sort of bats and 
blunt uh, weapons and chainsaws uh, kind of here and there even uh, for a little bit at least but uh, we have plenty of guns for sure but then you have um, you know uh, fists even uh, uh, here and there but um, so uh, like I said um, the melee stuff was a little rough you know especially when you have um, the knights in the armor right the power armor um when he, you know one of those power armor people were hitting some things with their fists was it's uh i, I would say it was a little rough but um the overall sort of um context or meaning of it you get it so you kind of like let it pass or you forgive it so yeah um, I, I'd say even like um, the very beginning, there's this big, big fight scene um, that breaks out. And there are plenty of rough spots, I would say. But overall, you kind of forgive it for like the overall grandiose and the, the violence and, you know, the results even, of course, the aftermath even. And um, some of these characters, right? Yes. Yeah, so, um so it's not perfect by any means when I say, you know, the oh the actions action scenes were great. I would say there are some rough spots for sure, but at least with um when it comes to like the monsters and the other things, right? They were I think they were pretty good, I would say. Um of course, there uh while there is CGI a, a lot in a lot of these places like the um, the ships, right? I forget. I forget what those ships were called. Like you know, the, like the the birds or whatever you call them. But the um, Pur Puritan um, makes it in here too. I think I, I forget the name. It's the big big airship. Um, that's all CGI, of course. But there are plenty of practical stuff. Actually, surprisingly, in here, including of course, um, you have the power armor being practical through and through which was i thought really great for the most part of course when they're flying or do these like extreme movements then that's like cgi stuff but when they're actually doing, you know just like walking around or just shooting and stuff like that that's all practical or at least mostly for sure uh, maybe they're like uh, cgi enhanced but no um, they were definitely practical one way or the other you know you can definitely see that when they're walking and you know interacting with the humans and stuff like that or just characters that stuff is great i love these practical effects and stuff like that I'm, I'm always all for it for someone who grew up in the 90s um I'm, I'm all for the physical stuff for sure because it really gives that organic organic feel to it for sure uh same, same with the the ghouls whenever they did they did appear there were um a good number of them here and there but of course you know that takes makeup and all that stuff so understandable that it is difficult to implement them but hopefully we'll see more of them. Maybe we'll see a whole society of these ghouls later on. Um, they are there are um, there there is a big backstory behind these ghouls too, and what's going, what's happening to them, and uh, I guess like this sense of sort of wokeness with them. I dare say, but um, social issues for sure with these ghouls and stuff like that but they didn't really touch upon that too much other than the fact that there was there was that one scene where one of the characters is just like oh we don't work welcome the ghouls or whatever you're not welcome here or whatever we don't serve your kind or whatever that's the only big hint of that uh you get with the ghouls and stuff like that relating to ghouls of course you know of course having one of the main characters being well the ghoul right so um <laughs> Um, that uh, I I think hopefully we'll see more of that being explored um, in in the next season because uh, once you once you see what's in store for se season two, build different. I think I think it's rest assured, right? That as well as the mutants, um, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, so I love the so the costume designing um, on top of that on that topic uh, with uh, you know on top of the power armor um, you have of course the vault suits right with the, you know the, the body suits and then you have the brotherhood stuff right I think that they, they did a good job making it very authentic uh, you have the squires right and then you have the knights of course um, they did a pretty good job portraying those um, 
through the costumes and you know that's also pretty important to help distinguish well, from one another and uh, and of course the characters behind these costumes as well um, I think for the most part though the yeah the characters presented here were palatable um, there, there probably are some characters you're probably gonna hate uh, which yes they're they're kind of written to be that uh, but there are also like different uh, side characters that I am interested in like with uh, with Lucy's brother he's kind of like the one uh, vault member that's like you know sort of self-aware and doesn't really follow that sort of cult like um, aspect of things you know he, he definitely is the one that you can relate kind of the most whereas you know um, the vault dwellers tend to be very cult like and they smile all the time and um, uh, they kind of have this very um, skewered perspective on things you know that they just have that cult like thing going on and also very extremely naive as uh, people who decide to stay underground and you know stay in this uh, safe haven and everything's all sanitized and just clean and safe right whereas you know you go into the real world you know everything's all radiated and rough and just you know people have to survive on their own sort of wits and stuff like that so they have they have the guts right to uh, get by but of course you have to sort of like survive with all these monsters right you have the rats the the cockroaches rat roaches of course you know these big fat disgusting uh the cockroaches because i i don't like those type of bugs personally for me so those so those uh rat roaches i, I can definitely relate when characters are just like you know i want to kill it blah, blah blah like you know i'm just like yeah go you know get rid of those uh rat roaches and of course um whenever uh um uh, the dog right we have the dog of course um i i, I i'm i i think that it's supposed to be dog meat but it could be a different dog meat um i know you know there's dog meat in fallout 4 definitely it's not the same exact one because i think dog meat in this one is female quote unquote or if you want to be technical uh cx 404 uh that is female for sure it's just that uh and usually when when uh, i think anyway dog meat is supposed to be a boy but maybe um this dog meat is going to be the first amongst um the other dog meats right uh you know what whatever you know offspring uh from this dog meat will be you know i don't know like dog meat the second or dog meat junior or whatever it is right um i guess depending on which generation you're looking into but yes anyway uh but yes we do have the dog and the dog kind of is there besides being cute and affectionate but also um pretty reliable for the most part um i i say i say uh you know dog or excuse me uh cx 404 um did play some sort of significant part in a way because um uh there is a plot point where um lucy has to pretty much um find her dad after his uh her dad was kidnapped by these group of raiders and lucy decides to go outside and you know of course the vault dwellers are just like are just like <gasps> you know um you know that's forbidden right because the world the, the outside world is dirty and nasty and such and um of course lucy is kind of like uh the one who wants to brave uh that such a, um as her mother did um you know for reasons that i will not uh, talk about here but um so yes um taking after kind of like her mother she wants to go out and rescue her dad and so um her uh while rescuing her dad um she runs into a bargaining chip sort of say sort of situation in one of the towns and um uh, uh which which of course reference from i'm sure one of one of the fallout games uh she runs into 
or she's supposed to be looking for the doctor because the doctor has um, this relic, right? They call the relic, which is very important later on, of course, and that's why he has a bounty on his head, quite literally, and um, happens to have CX-404 with him, which there is a backstory behind that, which I think was pretty nice to learn the backstory behind why, you know, why the doctor is so important, what's, you know, CX-404's involvement with that, Besides just being a, you know, his compa dog companion and such like that, um, so yeah, so eventually um, the doctor, you know, um, gets something happened to him, right? And um, uh, so C uh, CX has to um, sniff out and find the tra uh, and sniff out the trail. Uh, to find the doctor and such like that. So, um, you know, of course, uh, kind of, uh, tra as CX is traveling along with, you know, one of the main characters um, and such like that. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, the, throughout the story, it's uh, initially about finding, uh, a re it's a rescue story, but then, you know, there is th this big plot twist um, later on, which, you know, I thought was pretty cool. Um, and so, I, I thought overall, I was thoroughly entertained with all the action, the world theming, of course, the story behind it, the characters, of course. I thought these characters were written just fine. Um, I, 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 I thought them to be likable for the most part, but of course, you know, I gravitated more towards the ghoul overall. I love the, um, the backstory throughout um, um, throughout the series or this season, with with um, uh, Cooper slash the Ghoul, um, and and so um, you know, I I le I really leaned towards that character because I thought he was really cool, you know, all that stuff. I love the styling on him. I love him being that cowboy and all that stuff. I'm a little I'm a little sucker for that, um. I thought uh, Maximus was just okay. Um, he was just he's just all right. He definitely reminds me of um, Finn in a way, a little bit from Star Wars, um, just a little bit. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, you know, what's to hate about him? But there's just something about Maximus for me that I was just like, all right, you know, he's all right. I um I didn't I don't really hate him so to say, but I found him his story to be a little less entertaining. Maybe maybe it's just the way maybe the, the brotherhood was a little um well how how the brotherhood was portrayed and stuff like that in this one. Uh, I think maybe they could have told the backstory on them a little, a little better. Maybe that's why um to help um connect me with Maximus and sort of his involvement with the Brotherhood and stuff like that. Besides the fact that, oh, you know, his family died during the big, big nuclear fallout and stuff like that, the big nuclear war. And then, um, um, I guess, or at some point, right? Because there's, there's another, 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 um, big explosion thing that happened. And, uh, and then, um, Maximus was taken in by the Brotherhood. And, um, you know, he tried to be a soldier sense and stuff like that. So, um, there were, there were a couple of characters from there. I thought that, yeah, you know, I didn't like them, but, um, I thought one, at least one of the fates of, um, one of those characters was really funny. Um, so I think the wrap up on that one was pretty funny, somewhat satisfying for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think I'm just like a, a little more indifferent with Maximus for right now. Maybe, um, once I take a look at it again, you know, maybe I'll like Maximus a little more or once the season, season two rolls out, maybe, maybe he'll, um, kind of, uh, 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 uh maybe I'll, I'll come to like him a little more when, when season two happens, but um, but yeah, you know, there, there is a relationship that builds with Lucy and Maximus eventually, which I thought was fine. Um, as much as I, I am different a little bit to, with Maximus. I like Lucy better for some reason. I love what, um, the, the journey that she went through to get her father back and stuff like that. 
and, and all that in between. Um, and you know, of course, along the way, like I said, the ghoul was great. But um, I, I really liked uh, I really liked that initial character that she was, and then where she winds up at some point. You know, she really comes to learn um, to a notable degree of of what's going on with um with the world and stuff like that. So I love all the stuff. You know, I love the stem packs and stuff like that. Um, the rataways and you know the all the the little power ups and stuff like that that you do get um to see from Fallout, including even like Jet, I think was used or very early on at some point. Um, so, um, was there anything else that I can point out or anything like that? Um, you know, the writing of itself, I think was pretty good or at least decent, um, enough to tell a story to get across. Right. I like the twist. I like what they're trying to do. Like the reasoning behind the said twist, um, it kind of gives it a little bit of a very somewhat similar feel with um, Squid Game, and you'll know where that's going. But maybe Squ perhaps Squid Game did take a lot of uh, a little bit of inspiration from um, Fallout, but maybe Fallout, uh, you know, of course, probably took inspiration from something something else. But anyway, that's a whole another another argument. But anyway, so. Um, I think I think uh, I think the general consensus is that I did enjoy it. Um, if I were to give it a rating, uh, I think I think a, a solid eight out of ten personally for me. Um, I I don't think there's really inherently wrong with it, so to say. I think it's a pretty enjoyable series. Is it perfect by any means? No. Um, I I think it's pretty up there for me. I I I thought it was enjoyable, unless you know, as someone who is a more of a casual. Fallout enjoyer, I really did enjoy the theming and the the lore, the vast lore that you can discover throughout um, Fallout Four, at least. And here, um, I kind of got that flavor, and I, I think I think Amazon did a pretty good job telling um, a, a Fallout story their own way, and I like where it's going, you know, for the most part. And uh, with that, again, I, I'm gonna give it. A, I'll go ahead and give it an eight out of ten. Really, I, I did enjoy it, and all of that stuff. So, um, I, I, I really don't think it, 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 it um, you know, had too much wrong with it. But, um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, another way to look at it is that it's, it's an extension. Um, I think to, the Fallout tree it's so to say it's another branch i don't think it's supposed to be like retelling this exact story so to say it's 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 telling a story of fallout and that's and that's something i'm okay with so you are taking some weird elements and placing these things in this weird time it's like wait a minute you know shouldn't this be in like virginia or boston or something like that but it's here for some reason um those things kind of flew over my head for the most part because I was like so focused on like what's presented in front of me with, you know, Lucy and the ghoul and of course with Maximus. And so, um, I'm okay with that, honestly. And I'm, again, I'm definitely looking forward to what is in store for season two. So I think, uh, for overall, um, I think I highly recommend it to you all, for, uh, especially if you're looking for more online entertainment, you definitely find it there. For sure, especially if you're, you know, familiar with Fallout in some way or some form. So, I I, I say give it a shot. So yeah, um, that's it for me on this side of the uh, video. Anyway, I will talk about some spoilers here and uh, uh, later or um, soon. But uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and all that stuff. If you wanna go ahead and check it out. So, uh, cause I think it's a it's a, it's a pretty good eight, uh, eight episodes or eight hour watch or whatever. So. I think you'll have a good night um, enjoying and then binging, uh, which I forgot to mention almost. Um, they All the episodes are out. So um, that's one way to look at it too as a plus. Um, if you want to enjoy all of it, you can definitely enjoy all of it in one night. Um, I was able to do that. Although, be, I, I was, uh, although I'll be, uh, I was very tired, but um, I was able to enjoy it despite that. So 
Um, I, I, I would like to uh, hit on to this sport of things, but thank you very much if you want to, uh, you know, hit on out for, um, to avoid spoilers. But for those who want to stick around, thank you very much, and hope to see you all in a spoiler section of things. All right, so we're back for spoiler talk. Um, I'll I tr I'll try not to be too long, um, but yeah, uh, the, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight into the big twist of things, which basically would fall out. Um, so yes, um, it was kind of a setup in a way. Um, the uh, the dad, right, uh, Hank McLean, uh, McLean um, is the one who. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a part of this scheme anyway, let's just sort of say. And um, uh, not, the, not the mastermind, but he did help carry out the plan because, of course, obviously, it is 200 years later ever since. But um, we do have um, Hank. He was, I believe, an assistant, uh, an executive assistant of sorts. Uh, he was cryogenically frozen until 200 years later to help carry out the plan. And essentially, um, these vaults that were involved with, with uh, 30, 31, 32, and 33 are involved with just breeding people who, to, to become uh, these super managers, of, uh, quote unquote. Uh, only a few of them are chosen to be. Um, to be the next leader or whatever, and then, you know, help, you know, just, um, make these utopias and, and such like that. And then you have, um, these, uh, various vaults to see, um, you know, who survives and who dies, right? It's kind of like this weird experiment, uh, because I'm sure, I'm sure these vaults will have each of their own ways to survive and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and of course, um, the whole goal is to see who survives, who's strongest, right? Who's fit to be this like super manager, stuff like that. It, it's such a, it, it is a weird thing to think about, but basically, um, they want to just create this utopia, right? Utopias rather. And then they just want to wipe the slate clean, almost to say, because they, I, I guess they're just, they, they don't like how the world is running right now. So they just want to have um this sense of big this big sense of control really you know it's because um they became very powerful you know baltic anyway became very powerful and in fact um became likely more powerful than the government themselves in america so that you know that's why they initiated this whole thing it just felt like it's this big power rush right at least i think anyway and um, they, in fact, even initiated the first big fallout, right? Um, nuclear fallout. With, with all the bombs and stuff like that going off. That was them, rather. And, of course, of course, um, they probably made it look like, oh, it's, you know, either China or Russia or whatever with the communists, right? Um, you know, they did it and stuff like that, I'm sure. But, no, um, they did it to themselves probably throughout the world too maybe even but um definitely in america for sure los angeles was hit with multiple bombs it's um quite quite uh quite graphic for sure and then of course um that's why um uh Wal Wal uh uh not walter um uh cooper uh that's how he became a ghoul in the first place but um i forgot to mention though his overall goal is kind of unclear. Like, uh, is he really looking for his family, or is just is he just like getting by or something like that? But I guess he's still trying to, you know, just confirm for himself if his daughter is gone or not, or maybe she is a ghoul or something. I don't know. Um, along with um, the wife, maybe. But I think um, uh, it's safe to say that the wife is either gone or. Um, dead or passed away or whatever because of what she was trying to do, right? And um, 
And in fact, um, his wife uh, was also one of the masterminds behind this whole thing. And I think, in fact, she is the true mastermind behind the whole thing, too. She was the one who suggested that uh, that these vaults have their thing and, you know, uh, see who survives and stuff like that. And then um, she even says something about, like, you know, um, uh, dropping the bomb on themselves to wipe the slate clean, right? So, um, to have these vaults in the first place. Uh, so, so yeah, so you have her, and then you have, um, I guess, I get, I forget his name, but, uh, he became a brain, based, or he, his brain, uh, was implanted into a robot later on, and so now he's, like, reduced to this robot at this point, but, um, you have Hank, of course, carrying on said plan, and, um, uh, he, he wanted he wanted to um he wanted to of course carry out the plan so to say but um the raiders came in with their own mission of course and um they wanted to ki kidnap hank they wanted to kidnap hank because he had of course the codes for the relic to activate the relic and then you know they wanted to uh of course bring in the do or uh, have the bounty on the doctor and stuff like that or bring him in to um get the relic of course and with us why lucy was you know wanting to have the doctor be the bargaining chip in the first place to get her father back and stuff like that unbeknownst that of course hank was kind of in on it in a way um this whole time and then you know he was the one who um dropped the bombs on um uh, on Sandy, Sh I, I think it was like Sandy Shore or something like that. I, I feel what it was. It, it was the Sandy City. I'm just gonna call it. What you know, and of course that's where um, uh, Maximus lost his parents and stuff like that. So th that's you know, there's that connection there. Of course, um, Hank was the one who re who initiated part two of the story essentially, um, and her mother, uh, Lucy's mother, uh, wasn't technically killed, but pretty much killed. Because uh, she was ghoulified. She became this terrible, terrible, um, tragically terrible uh, uh, stated uh, ghoul. Uh, she was pretty much feral, gone, but her body was still there, you know, technically. And so, um, uh, that was fucked up, to say, <laughs> to say the least. And so, if Lucy, you know turns face kind of in a way she just loses it and you know wants to cut ties with her dad at this point i definitely don't blame blame her for sure um and i think she in fact was the one who uh sh sh you know finished off her mother to free her essentially put her to rest um finally you know her her mother found out what Hank was, right, really, and so, uh, Ro uh, Rose, Lucy's mother, initially took Lucy and, um, her brother, um, I forget his name, but, um, you know, Lucy's brother, uh, I think, was it more like Morty or something like that, I forget, I forget his name, uh, um, let me, let me look it up in a second here, uh, but, um, like I mentioned, he was a very interesting character for sure, because he was, like, the, 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 the most, like, grounded and aware character for sure and honestly oh norm that's what it was uh norm um definitely had uh some sort of uh i i i say for sure he is a secondary main character for sure whereas lucy maximus and the ghoul are very much the forefront for sure but but um norm is right behind him for sure for sure but yes um norm um her little brother was also taken um by rose and uh hank didn't like that and so um of course um he just wanted to drop the bomb um i forget why specifically but you know yes um, i guess he just had that power um 
probably, you know, gives himself a reason to not go outside or whatever, um, you know, you know, along with the rest of the the, the vault dwellers. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, so um, yeah, her her dad is just fucked, man. That, that's yeah, so to say, right? Obviously, at this point, um, I then um thought you know um well i thought the raiders were supposed to be like kind of good guys but i think they're just there with their own agenda of course but um i think uh what was it, the leader of those raiders um i thought she was kind of interesting i kind of wish we got some backstory on her but we didn't really uh she was just kind of just there and then she seemed to be admired ring for um rose you know, she was like calling her kind and all that stuff, and then, you know, she even like, you know, um, went out to battle the Brotherhood um, when the Brotherhood came in, coming into their base, and then um, uh, we, she comes back, but she's like mortally wounded, so she uh, takes a takes a seat next to um, Rose's body, holds her hand, and then she just dies there. So um, either she was like really uh she admired her greatly or she was actually in love with her some, in some way um i thought that was kind of interesting but um yeah I, I i don't think we did get it too much backstory if 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 at all so um so that that was kind of a shame or kind of a wasted opportunity because she's gone now so yeah probably one of the one of the uh the negatives that i can definitely take away from uh for this series um there were some other you know uh some other side plots um such as uh theatus i think his name was or that that thaddeus um or thaddeus thaddeus uh was like the bully right and um he well initially thought um well he initially was like kind of like a uh a goody goody two shoots kind of guy but then um he became a bully somehow and bullied maximus and that somehow leveraged him to be popular amongst um the other trainees in the boot camp of the brotherhood of steel and um the brotherhood um uh, pretty much, uh, we're going to have, what was it, uh, Maximus's friend, uh, I forget her name, but, um, she, she was going to be, um, part, uh, part of this mission, but then something happened, um, someone put, put the razor in her shoe or something, so that she, her, her foot got cut up pretty bad. So she couldn't go, and so um, Maximus actually took her spot because of what he displayed in front of the uh, the big the big um, counseling member or whatever in the Brotherhood, and so he got the pl he got the spot, and so he was Squire, and then um, when his knight died, he left him he left him for dead. Because um, the bear attacked him and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that guy was a coward anyway. So he didn't. De he definitely did not deserve that armor. Um, it was funny. Maximus took the armor. Power armor. And then Thetis came in. To be his squire. And then. Um, he, and then fucking um, Maximus was just like. Bossing him around and everything. It was great. It was great. And then when um, Thetis. Revealed his backstory, sort of, of why he's he he was doing those things to um, Maximus unannounced. Maximus was just like, "I gotta tell you something, man." Revealed his face. There was just like, "Oh fuck you," blah blah blah, and then took his fusion core and everything. Um, they just ran into um, the snake oil doctor, and then um, I think it's uh, oh yeah, because uh, during uh, before he took the fusion core. Um, to shut down the armor, uh, his foot got stomped by um, Maximus, 
Because he was, like, going to do something to him or something. I forget. But um, uh, his foot got fucked up. And so the snake oil doctor did something. But um, at the price, though, of not only the fusion core, but um, uh, he, he essentially made Thetis into a, a ghoul. So he is going to turn into a ghoul at some point. Um, because just because of the way he regenerated, so um, you kind of get the hint of that. Hint of that, and Max is when he saw that happen for himself along with Lucy. Um, what you gonna call? Um, yeah. So Thetis is now a ghoul. So it it is going to be interesting to see where he goes. Right? He you know he's gonna die. He can't die that easily because he's a ghoul now. And so I would like to see the transformation on him at, uh, at some point, uh, especially in season t- uh, two. And so along with that, of course, Lucy, you know, went through all that shit. Um, and now puts their trust into Maximus. And um, I thought that was pretty, pretty believable. Um, at least, at least uh from the mo- at least it, 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 they did a job of telling, okay, Lucy trusts Maximus the most, despite, you know, running into a lot of people not being trustworthy, especially when she was first married, quote unquote, to one of the the vault members. He turned out to be a uh raider. Um I believe um uh, uh you know obviously made things hard for her to trust people, but then with Maximus right, she learns, you know, that he is that person, right? He's one of the good, the f- the few, right? The diamond in the rough, so to say. Even though Maximus was like, um, "Hey, um, you know, Maximus is my true name. Um, Knight Titus was just someone else's name that I took because you know, whatever, blah blah blah." But um, Lu- Lucy was like, "Uh, yeah. I mean, I threw fucking acid in somebody's face, so." You know, the wasteland sucks. So, yeah, the, or the outside world sucks. So, hey, come back with me to the vault. You know, there's no war or anything like that. It's safe. You get food, all that stuff. You know, come back with me when you're done or whatever. You know, and uh, Maximus by her time because um, I think the Brotherhood was coming in because they were also after the head or relic for, you know, and stuff like that. Which is funny because in the end, uh, the Brotherhood got control of it. So, the cold fusion thing. So, um, so yeah. I mean, that's really all there is to it for the big plot twist. Yeah, you know, her dad being a piece of shit. And, of course, um, uh, the initial big one was, of course, uh, with the Raiders, right? Coming in, invading... And taking taking the dad and all that stuff for obvious reasons. Now, uh, I love where this is going. Uh, they they are going into New Vegas, right? Uh, Fallout New Vegas. At least they're gonna base off of that for sure. So I wonder how much of New Vegas is going to make it into here, right? So it's gonna be really cool. There are plenty going to be hopefully be plenty of ghoul characters for sure cool ghoul characters at that so hopefully you know uh uh cooper's interactions with these other ghouls is going to be really interesting right and then what's going on with maximus um what's going on with lucy and of course what's going on with her dad right uh, hank since he took the um the power armor and such so um was uh was there anything else that I'm missing here? Um Oh yeah, and then her brother, right? He's trapped now with the um the cryogenically frozen dwellers, right? And uh, who knows, right? Cuz he's trapped. There's no food, there's nothing. And so um maybe unless uh, someone else comes in along and rescues him for sure, Maybe um the cousin right uh I forget his name uh let me let me, let me see here I think it might have been uh oh Chet yeah very 
odd name, but yes. Uh, the cousin, Chet, could could kind of like redeem himself because, you know, in the end he's a coward, you know, as uh, Norm called him that, quote unquote. Uh, and then of course there was stuff going on with um, the rest of the vault stuff, right? They're moving around people and um, you know all that stuff. There's like seek the the secrets that they're hiding. You know, even um, the overseer, right? Um, uh, Reg, I think her name was. Um, no, no, Reg is uh, the dude. Um, Betty, yes, Betty has her own thing going on too. So I um, kind of forgot to talk about her as well. Um, she she definitely has a foot into the story as well. Um, with all the fault stuff going on, so that season season two is definitely going to be really interesting. There are plants being seed, uh, plants being seeded. You know, with um, uh, the stuff going on with New Vegas and then all the vault stuff going on. Norm, you know, what's going to happen to him, really? Is he going to be rescued? Is he, ha does he, is he going to put him into the, uh, the, the chamber or whatever, right? To be frozen? Um, who knows, right? So, there's probably other stuff I'm forgetting. Um, but that's really the main points of it, of course. And, of course, what's going to happen with the ghoul, right? Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That is um all there is to it. So um, that's all I got for this entire review of um Fallout, the TV series by Amazon or presented by Amazon. So thank you very much for uh, tuning in for this portion of things. Uh, again, I really did enjoy it for what it was, and uh, I definitely look forward to more. So, um, I'm probably gonna honestly rewatch it. Just to, you know, see things and stuff like that. Um, maybe I'm missing or something. The the little little context, the little intricate little details. Um, yeah, man. Um, pretty cool, man. That uh, they made this happen. So another another live action show, but at least this one's pretty tasteful. So, anyways, thank you very much, and. Uh, um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe button, all the links in the description help to help out perhaps this channel and you guys get something out of it. So uh, th again, thank you very much and hope to see you all in the next video. Sean out.